wanted to start my talk really mentioning you know, why I'm doing this. So I run the oncology department at Kaiser San Francisco, and I'm our regional director of cancer survivorship. But, but why am I doing this? And what am I planning to talk about in these three slides? Well, by a show of hands, the first thing I want to do is ask, if, you've ever, if you're personally touched by melanoma, can you raise your hand here? Yeah, yeah. If you know someone with cancer, can you raise your hand here? If you're a caregiver for someone with cancer, raise your hand here. Right. Um, that last one's really important for me because we talk a lot about melanoma and really survivorship and, and, and melanoma is really not just about um, the patients that we treat, but also about the communities that we live in and our caregivers. So I want to give a shout out. Um, this is the, my first slide, so here's a third of it. <laughs> This is me, my dad, and my mom, and this is my personal passion for survivorship. So my mother was diagnosed with metastatic lung cancer, so that means stage four incurable lung cancer, uh, about 10 and a half years ago. And we went through about a year and a half of treatment, and uh, she passed away about nine years ago. So there is not a single day that I, I, I get up and I think about that journey that she took and that journey that I took with her as a caregiver and as a son, as a loved one, and our, what our family went through. So for me, it's not just a journey I see every day uh, for my cancer patients, but also a personal journey about what we all go through. So we'll talk a little bit about that today. Um, so this is a slide that's really important for me. When I think about survivorship, I think about, I think most people think, okay, I finished my treatment and now I'm a survivor. And that's very typical of this active surveillance phase where we've been diagnosed, we got our treatment, and now we're in surveillance. But there's a lot more to survivorship that I think about when I'm trying to build that regional program for us to make sure we're all taken care of. I actually think about what the American Cancer Society thinks about as survivorship is really at the beginning. We have, in starting in 2040, there's gonna be over 20 million survivors in this country. And what we need to know is how are we treating them all the way from the beginning? Because in the diagnosis, there's already things that we can do for them. We can make sure that their uh, diagnosis happens quickly. We can make sure that they're seen very quickly. And we can make sure that their supportive care happens early. What I mean by that is, what about the nutrition needs of our, our, our survivors? What about the, the psychosocial needs of our survivors? I'll give you one example. We actually think that the trauma of a diagnosis happens right here and as we go through treatment, there are more and more ups and downs in that journey. And when we get traumatized, there are over, there's, there's really PTSD that happens over and over again. And so we're trying to launch a resiliency program right at the time of diagnosis, where caregivers and patients can come at the diagnosis and listen to our therapists talk about real skills on how we build resilience in ourselves and how we really deal with those ups and downs and so that we don't get traumatized long term when we talk about those other parts of survivorship. The other thing that we think about is um, what, it, what about the active surveillance phase? Because once we finish treatment and we've been navigated into the system very successfully, we, all the care has been coordinated, how do we know that we're getting a surveillance? Because there's always that internal feeling, well, I've, I've been treated, how do we know? How, how are, my caregiver, uh, how, how are my providers following me? And so we do have this active tracking system that we've built, and it's, it's fantastic because every, every per patient in our system will be monitored and not one person will fall through the cracks. We don't want to rely on folks to say, oh, you know, in my busy schedule, I think I'm due for my, I can't remember when my eyeglasses are due for an eye checkup. <laughs> Sometimes what about my skin checkup? And so we, don't, we want to take that, make that easy. We want to take that burden away from our, our patients and really take that on ourselves in our active surveillance phase. And then we have long-term surveillance. And so one of the real challenges that we have in America is that our care is fragmented. We have primary care doctors in one silo, we have oncologists in another, we have surgeons in another, dermatologists. And in a truly integrated system like we have in Kaiser Permanente, what we can, can do is to say we're going to work together and we're gonna make sure that your surveillance happens in a timely manner, but it's all coordinated. So that your primary care doctors always use the same electronic medical record, they know what's going on, they're prompted to see you, and they're coordinating with your oncologist, your dermatologist, and that's what we're able to do. 
this is a really important phase for us, this long-term treatment and care. Because what we do know that is in metastatic melanoma, we have, we have survivors now. And we call them survivors because now there's treatments like immunotherapy that have completely changed the face of what we're doing. And metastatic melanoma is now something we really think about what are the survivorship needs of our, our metastatic population? And this goes to a lot to our, our what, how do we provide the support and care, not just nutrition or, or, or cancer rehab, but really in how we think about our goals of care and how we think about long-term treatment when you're coming in for, for prolonged treatment and side effects. And so survivorship is really much bigger than just the diagnosis and navigation, our surveillance program, but it's really looking at our entire melanoma population and managing each patient to their needs and their individual, um, uh, individual needs. Last slide. <laughs> um, what we heard from our, our patients is that you know, survivorship is, again, much more than actually the treatment of the cancer. And what we're seeing is that we need to build programs around survivors to make sure we, we actually handle the, the, the real needs in their communities. And so we built a uh, cancer survivor program, and it's, it's rolling out through our, our region. And so I just want to point out a couple of things, because whether you're in our system or not, these are things you can ask your doctor about, you ask your care team about, and these are really important for your overall health, not just to prevent another melanoma recurrence, but really to keep you well overall, which is our, our goal. So I'll just point to the top couple things where we talk about emotional wellness. So we know that the mind and body are connected, I think most of us agree with that now. Um, and we do know that the mind is really important in what we do. And so we have mindfulness programs, we have resiliency programs, and mindfulness is really important when you think about the connection between stress, for example, and your immune system. We just spent so much time talking about all this breakthrough immunotherapy and costing billions of dollars to our country, great treatments, but what are we doing to help our own immunity? And what are we doing in our own lives that can, that can, that can affect that? And so we really want to work with our patients saying, how do we create a mindfulness practice? How do we create wellness, not just in the body, but in the mind? We have fitness and acupuncture programs. So for example, in San Francisco, we were very excited about the data in acupuncture showing that just using needles could actually reduce chemo-induced nausea. It can improve cancer-related pain. And, and so we built an acupuncture unit right on site because we believe that the data, the data shows that acupuncture can benefit us. We have trials where we study physical activity while you're in the infusion suite. And we, because we know in several cancers that the stronger you are and the more physically fit you are, the, the better your survival and outcomes. We have healthy eating. So we call it the Thrive Kitchen, but we hired a, a primary care doctor who was a chef in San Francisco. And we're teaching cooking classes because we understand the value of nutrition, not just in prevention, but in wellness. And food, uh, we all, uh, who, who doesn't love, <laughs> like food here? Um, but it's, it's not important just in the, our enjoyment of life, but also in our health. And we, we understand that, and we're helping people live around our, our Healthy Kitchen initiative. OK, so we have coaching and education. So believe it or not, and this is a shout out to all, the, all those folks that really believe in YouTube and the remote stuff, um, we have telemedicine integrative oncology visits now. So you can, for free, use telemedicine to engage with one of our doctors. Um, the one we have in San Francisco, her name is Dr. Ahmed. And she's a trained integrative oncology specialist, and she can talk you through some of the things that you're interested in in terms of your overall health related to cancer. So we have even telemedicine visits related to that. And we have classes. So we, um, uh, Kyle in the back has helped me arrange a class where we literally spend time in our survivorship clinics um, talking about it, but we also have classes where we have all our survivors now join a class where they learn about all the things we can offer at Kaiser Permanente and also talk about what it means to be a survivor. And so we, we think that that educational process is super important in helping us return to a, a normal life um, for, for our patients. Um, finally, support groups and research. I just want to mention uh, the research por portion because that's super important for us. We know that survivors have a lot of needs. That's where the, the country's research is right now, that there are a lot of side effects or a lot of long-term issues. And we're studying that. Um, but what we really need is that next phase of research. What are we going to do about that? So I'll give you some examples of some exciting research we're doing about how to improve survivors' outcomes. We have, for example, in our head and neck uh, division, a um, 
again, looking at acupuncture, we're actually doing acupuncture on, on patients after they get radiation therapy and to see if the saliva starts flowing after, radi after radiation. It's, it's crazy stuff, but it actually potentially works, which is why we're studying it. Um, we have, um, as I mentioned too, literally exercise um, curriculum where we're ex having, having people in the fusion centers exercise and seeing if they're doing better. We have nutrition um, uh, studies as well. We have financial toxicity studies because we understand that there's, there's a lot of financial burden to survivorship. And so this, this is a, an area that's very, very important for me because it, even going beyond describing things, we need to fix some of the problems that we're seeing in survivorship. Not only do we need to create that integrated system, we need to make it better. Okay. So this is, this is um, my three slides. I really want to use this opportunity for me to learn from you about how we can improve melanoma survivorship because you know, we built a lot of these programs around voices just like yours, and um, this is a really unique forum for us to learn from you. Um, so I look forward to being able to talk to you all afterwards and at the, at the Q&A.